Greetings and salutations, you beautiful individuals. This is Lee Gonlock, Eric, and Mark here with your beauties for our final preview ahead of MSI 2024. That's right, next time we're talking, we're going to have actual games from China to chat about. Oh, baby, MSI, it's going to be here. And it's crazy that it is as short a break as it has been almost ever to get to an MSI between the playoff gaps in the regions. But we're here, MSI, big games, international stage, fresh patch rolling on in. Let's dive in and get ready to make a couple predictions here before things get underway tomorrow. And we start, obviously, with that play-in stage, how things are going to play out. The main thing to look at here is, is there going to be an upset? Do you see one of these Pool 1 seeds, Pool 1 or Pool 2, that's T1, Top Esports, FlyQuest, and Fnatic. Are any of them not making it to the main stage? I, You know, this is the early one, the first question, and I'd like to bring some spice, a heavy hitter, not be a snooze fest right out of the gates. I think we are going to see a straightforward path through this play in stage for a lot of it's these like top hot teams. Ones. You got to build it up a bit, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that as you move through that play in stage, we are going to see those top teams establish themselves, establish that set order. And it's going to be tough for these uh, wildcard teams to find that upset. The key here is going to be getting, getting that first domino. If you're able to get that one upset, right? Whoever it is finds that one. It changes what that next match is going to be, what that next situation through that bracket part of it is is going to fall out. That is where I think absolutely you can introduce that chaos and you can get one of these wildcard teams to make that run. I'm not ready to predict it without getting that first domino to fall for one of those teams. I think that first domino does fall. I think these four squads are getting out, but I know. I've seen it. FlyQuest has taken the hard road to get there. I, I can totally see them losing that opening match to PSG, having to go through losers, beat Astral Esports, and then beat PSG in the rematch. I think they're getting through, but they want the extra practice. It's probably the strategy. And I think that would be the one that a lot of people would identify as this possible upset one where I think you are still, and maybe just the mind bias of the LCS, keeping that faith in FlyQuest and those individual players as that favorites, you do got to look at the side of PSG and what they've been able to accomplish and how they've been able to play. That is a big thing for me and their consistency on the international stage, at least showing up to some degree. That's going to be it for me. And that is the question. Does FlyQuest have it out of the gates against a squad like PSG, which you better believe will be prepared? The other question is, does TES or T1 drop a game in play in stage? I'm going with no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing that one from these two guys. I think we're going to talk a little bit more uh, as we get into a couple more of these informations about MSI and our predictions about it, why I feel like we aren't going to see Top Esports or T1 drop any of these early games. Then we get to what is the micro meta that happens at these international events. And obviously, it's been a few weeks since we've seen most of these regions. So we're going on to patch 14.8. What picks are going to be breaking the meta at MSI? The latest ones you've been seeing people talk about is the Galio flex pick potentially coming in tanky in the mid lane or going into the bot lane as a support, which we know a lot of guys can pilot. And alongside that, the Camille similarly being able to be flexed around. Both these champions getting buffs heading into this. We've already seen Camille played support a little bit, but if she goes to the top side, that's a big buff for the LPL. Oh my God. Uh, it's a scary one for the LPL if Camille is a top lane terror at this event because we're gonna see her other places of the map as you said i will take that bet i'll take that gamble that we're gonna see camille multiple places not just see her i'll take that as well on the galio for that pick that we're going to see i think mid lane of course and in that support role are going to be ones that we're looking at just mentioned it t1 top esports how are they getting through how are we feeling confident about them in those early games for me it is that meta for t1 and how they are able to adapt how they're able to adjust how they're able to make that cooking happen like we saw at the world championship we didn't see as much of it throughout the playoff run in the lck i think this gap of time and and what is changing for this msi patch is going to be a good basis for a good base for t1 to start from to build that expand it out and find their own field their own take 
on that meta that Galio pick for Faker and Kyria are going to be one to look at, as well as, of course, that Camille pick. Just talked about the LPL with it. Cannot forget about Kyria taking it into the bottom lane. Faker, of course, has got everything within his pool. And then Zeus as well can bust it out in the top side if that's going to be something. That is something to keep a tr an eye on with T1 as far as that meta in this, in this new one that we're going to have for MSI. And obviously somebody like Bin can take over an entire tournament playing Camille. And then you talk about what counter picks are maybe coming for this Galio or the Camille. You know, Cassio top lane has one of the highest win rates lately in solo queue. And time and time again, something against Camille, a Jax, a Fiora coming into the lineup. That's only making 369 and Bin an even scarier prospect if those picks are going to be met. Yeah, Cassiopeia, you know, rising up. We're going to have Rise, of course, as well, getting a little buff and change. That was usually Faker running. asked. He said, listen, we've been dealing with the DDoS stuff. Can you at least buff Rise? He traded it for, for the Azir nerfs are what's going to be coming on win, through win, as well. <laughs> yes, it's a win-win because those Azir nerfs, you better believe, aren't going to do a single thing to me, actually, at the professional level if you are Azir. I think that's going to be the thing. We're still going to see this champion pick for so many reasons and so many things that he can provide with that scaling, especially the displacement of the ultimate is the biggest one for me that still comes through. doesn't matter if you're changing that, you know, W soldier damage early or, you know, making the health regen. It's not going to be enough. He's still going to be a factor in that mid lane. Now for the bottom lane. I think there are a couple of interesting picks that can come through. Of course, we've seen Kaisa get a little bit of a buff. Now that was more so towards the AD numbers than the AP numbers. Zeri gets a little bit of a health decrease type of situation. I don't think that's really going to do so much about what we do and when we see Zeri's creep on through the meta. The big ones for me is going to be Jin coming on through with some pretty substantial buffs to hit most of his kit, as well as Draven getting a focus buff towards that early game bully persona. And you're looking at this event and you're telling me that you don't see a couple of mega red flags as far as who's going to play Draven and be someone you're scared of bullying you on it? Yeah, I think you're putting those red flags right down at Top Esports front door and right down in front of G2's front door because that is going to be scary. And the Draven one is interesting because there's already so many picks that people are emphasizing in pick ban, banning away in the bot lane with the Callista Varus, Zeri sometimes, Jinx if it's a pocket pick. There's so many things that demand attention. So we'll see if this Draven does slide through into some of these pick bans, even for guys who are so iconically synonymous with that pick. It ain't an international event without talking about NA versus EU. But the modern version, I'm less even looking at the head-to-head -head and I'm looking at them against the LPL and the LCK. So Mark, North America or Europe, who is getting more wins against the east at this event and we can say a tie for zero if we want <laughs> now historically that might be the the number one option right there i think it but was also, two wins last msi they got collectively but looking at the historical perspective there have been a couple of them right and so we do need to find who is going to have the better success versus these lck lpl squads and for me I'm betting on G2. I know it didn't work the last time around. If you asked to bet on G2 at this international event, but I see the rebound. I see the redemption coming for this squad. And I see a Caps playing at a level where he is going to be a factor in determining what is the outcome of the game. And if that's it going on, G2's got a chance. That's what I always feel about with this squad. I think there will be that rebound for G2. The, the counter argument here for North America, for NA, to say, what about us? What about NRG, who we've left at home because they are not <laughs> in a position to go into MSI? You do need to have a collective effort. That's not just FlyQuest. That's not just Team Liquid. That's not just Abuipo. That's not just Impact. That's having both squads find success against the LCK and LPL, find a way to get that punch in, get some damage in there. That's got to be it for NA, is they get that combined effort and both squads are finding at least something to build up that power against the LCK and LPL. Otherwise, I think it's all up to G2 pulling Fnatic, just dragging them on through and saying, we're taking this one for the LEC. Yeah, unless the LPL and LCK are completely caught off guard by some Ziggs and Cassiopeia picks out of Team Liquid, I wouldn't be surprised if G2 has more 
wins against the LCK and LPL than the other three teams combined. And that honestly might be a number like two or three, but <laughs> probably more than the others. Even in a situation where you're going like, okay, what about Grandpa Impact? finds it and he punishes someone like Zeus on T1, right? That's an angle we could see Zeus has struggled. Impact is doing well. He's got that experience. Now all these things, right, can come through. But but that's not enough, right? There needs to be something else when you're talking about these matches. And even when you're talking about Caps versus any of these teams, if he's individually dominating, yes, that is one ticket, one path to push towards that nexus. You need a little bit of extra help. It needs to be a little bit more collective as that. If I'm calling for the collective help from FlyQuest and Team Liquid to work together for North America, Caps has got to call for the collective help of his teammates to get through as G2. Now, obviously, when you head into these events, the big teams have high expectations. And when you're high up, that means you can fall when you can't deliver. So biggest potential disappointment, whether we're talking team or player, I feel like Gen G is the obvious answer for people because they have struggled internationally, but I'm not feeling at this one. I might go with a squad. I'm looking at either of the two seats, either Top Esports or T1, because both, even though they lost in finals, obviously have expectations to perform, but they have a couple of players who haven't looked as good of late. Zeus, you already mentioned, and even 369 got a bit gapped in those finals by Mr. Bin. Those are the very true counterpoints and where you can see the chance for these teams to falter. I'm taking the big fish. I'm taking your boy BLG all the way at the Ooh, top. The okay. Kings, I'm taking Bin, Mr. 3-0. And that confidence that this team should and has you know, earned all the way through their accomplishments in the LPL Spring Split, I think they're going to get checked at this MSI by a couple of these squads, a couple of these LCK boys rolling on through, finally looking for redemption for the LCK at MSI. This MSI event, what is it? Uh, 2017, 2018 or something like that since the LCK last won? SKT, when Faker was playing Galio mid. It's crazy, the LPL has been running this tournament. And what do we see returning? Galio mid for Faker possibility. And that's the angle I'm taking where the disappointment comes through for BLG. I think they're gonna move swoop on through they're gonna show that mighty power that they've got all the way up until a point where you get to the best of scenarios and that is where the draft is gonna come through and i think they're gonna get taken advantage of they're gonna have that overconfidence that 3-0 bin right to the camera love it type of attitude it's gonna bite them in the behind because they are gonna leave something up they're gonna ego something in draft and they're gonna get smashed and that is where the disappointment comes through for the number one team at this event the only angle where maybe a Western team you can talk about biggest dis disappointment is if FlyQuest or Fnatic fail to get out of play in stage. Yes, uh, that that's uh, that's a little bit less so. I was going more so on, okay, we're still getting the firepower from BLG, but ultimately it's that confidence. It takes them down. Someone else gets that hot hand, gets their pick, and they br burst on through and drive on. This is the downside. This is the sad times. This is the eating a whole tub of ice cream late at night type of situation. For Feels so NAD. good in the moment and so bad half an hour. Later. <laughs> it's, it's so bad later on type of thing. And that's how it would feel if we're looking at any of these squads getting ousted at this point. It's understandable. And certainly it's one where then from the fan perspective, the excitement, the hype for the event, the, you know, spice, all these things, they get added up and that lo level goes up. Back home, you're not feeling good about seeing any of those squads get ousted. Positive side of things. Going the whole distance for a squad. They're handing out finals MVPs these days at MSI. Knight picked it up last year. Not just who do we see winning this event, Mark, but who is the standout in those finals holding up that second trophy? I, I, it's got to be your boys. The number one team from the LCK, Gen G coming on in it, it pains me to say as the t1 fanboy because i would like to say that it is t1 making the triumphant return for lck at msi it's gonna be trophy and it's gonna be him dominating in that mid lane taking whatever picks that we are seeing right here through keep an eye on the akali and the silas another couple champions that are as well picking up not necessarily as impactful as some of these other guys that we have talked about, but some some significant buffs heading towards if, this patch. If he does it on those two picks, he's truly just absorbed Zeka into his repertoire now. 
But that's the thing. He's got that angle. We know that he is capable on those champions to provide that angle. We've seen him be willing to take things to another level, like the Aurelian Soul that we saw all the way through the LCK finals. I think this is it. The monkey's off the back. It is finally time. You got Keen and Canyon with us. A couple of extra X factors. I don't care if it's pe pedestrian passenger princess pays. You're making it through as Gen G. I, I mean, if they do win the whole thing with pays playing at the level that he does, that is a, a truly world class performance from a lot of the other uh, Gen G members. I'm on the Gen G train as well, but I got Canyon as the difference maker in those finals. The new guy comes in. Something's got to break with the Gen G International debuff and Canyon leveling up at these big events because we've seen it even when D plus and Damwon was slumping. Canyon always steps up during the biggest matches. He's the missing piece for this Gen G squad internationally. Oh man, I'm I'm loving the Gen G pick. I'm happy to see another one come through as well, and I will accept the Canyon. We'll just fall angle. even harder when they. <laughs> Exactly. But I think the, the the other angle, the other prediction that I think I could make here is the T1 angle. They make that cooking happen. They find the right sauce with this patch coming on through. Didn't really get to mention it, but Guma Yusi on the gin. Remember Worlds, that gin pick and how crazy that was? Yeah, it made a big difference. And certainly we've also seen Guma Yusi have some bad moments on that gin as well for T1 fans. That's plenty in the memory I think we are going on the more recent memory with that when you're going with Faker's uh, champion pool as well. Jarvin, another jungler who's getting a couple of little buffs, a little bit of a tune-up, could see uh, owner piloting that champion very well. That's the angle for T1. They get lucky. They get hot. They get that dominant hand on the control of the meta. That's their ticket to winning this MSI. It's, it seems like the mental for Genji is really good coming into this T1. Looked much better in that loser's bracket. And... There's got to be something with the LCK saying, we were embarrassed. Last MSI. I know T1 ran the LPL gauntlet to win the world championship, but this is MSI. It's a different event on the home stage here in China. We've seen China do it in Busan, places in Korea. Shut up that home crowd and come away with the title. I feel like Genji and T1 are playing with a little extra mustard on this series. Yeah, yeah. And, and especially you can't let it go into any situation where you are letting the crowd be a factor because, yes, as much as you like to say not a factor, can block it at all these type of things, I think it's it's ridiculous. I think absolutely, as a human being, you're going to feel some type of response to that type of attitude, that type of crowd, especially how we know it can be. I, bro, I've been to Chengdu. I know how, how crazy they can get for a oh, League of Legends type of event. We're going to see it at this MSI, and you better believe if you are these LCK teams, you are one from the LEC, from the LCS, from anywhere else but the LPL. You better be prepared for the hometown fans being all over you. And, and buckle up if you're from the LCS or LEC, because you're used to playing in your rinky-dink studio from the spring <laughs> split. This is going to be a pretty serious level up. Oh, mega level up in that regards, but... Man, I cannot wait. This is fantastic, this MSI event. I think what we've got with the new format, the patch rolling on through, and how quickly we are getting towards this event right off of the heels of the domestic playoffs, this is going to be the MSI we are going to remember. World's birth already on the line, and that extra seed also on the line, so actually something to play for for these squads as well. So 24 hours, not even. We'll be having games to talk about, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.